Yeah, uh, hard fought game, a hard fought game. Uh, we talked to our team about this on Thursday and Friday. I actually showed them a video of the Arturo Gotti, uh, Mickey Ward fight that ninth round to kind of show them exactly what I thought this game would end up being. And sure enough, it ended up being one of those four quarter games right there to the end. I um, give a lot of credit to West Virginia for the job that they, they did and, and the way they competed. Uh, really proud of our team. Um, you know, they faced adversity throughout the game where we got down. Uh, things happened and gave up some big plays on special teams. But the thing that really jumped out to me, I think, which was created by how we work and the things we've done in the offseason is our guys kind of bonded together and they kept fighting. And to me, that's the important thing. Uh, the discipline issue with the penalties, you know, we had some inopportune penalties that, you know, we're going to keep coaching them through it. We gave up four points when we had a stop there in the red zone on third down. We jump off sides. Those are all corrected. Well, fortunately for us, we're able to correct it with a win. And so, again, I got to give the kids credit in that locker room. They, uh, they hung in there. They believed. Uh, they wanted it more and really proud of the job they did today. We'll celebrate it for 24 hours, uh, get back in here tomorrow as a coaching staff, and then Monday uh, set our preparation on making some of the corrections from this game and getting ready for Howard. Uh, with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Coach, uh, on third down offensively in the second half, I think you guys uh, moved the chains uh, five of the, list, the last six times before taking that kneel down. What was the difference in that fourth quarter for you guys offensively? I think we committed to running the football. Um, you know, we got into some good third, advantageous third down situations where at first and second down, we were able to get it to third and two to three, third and four, which to me, uh, being able to run the ball in third and short and third and four, really, really helps your offense, um, you know, and, you know, I thought that we did a really good job after going, I think, three of 10 there in the first half or in the first three quarters, but we got those first downs when we needed it. Um, it was great to see the offense finish on the field the way they did, uh, controlling the line of scrimmage. Coach, you talked about the offensive line and, and sort of seeing what you had. What's your instant take after the game on how your guys did up front? Yeah, you know, it's always hard to judge it um, immediately after the game. But the one thing that really stood out is, you know, as we say going into this game, we feel really good about, you know, seven to eight of those guys that really have shown that they can play winning football for us. Uh, we're still young up there, and that's the one position group that takes a little longer to develop. And uh, we were fortunately, again, able to get out of the game without any major injuries on the offensive line, which to me is the one area where we have depth issues. And so, uh, it was great to see those guys be able to run the ball when we needed to run the ball. And I think it will give them confidence as we move forward and we keep uh, trying to establish an identity as being a team that can do both really well. When, when you look at this game as a barometer, like you said, what, what was kind of your reading of just how they handled that fourth quarter with Jacorian interception going into Talia's touchdown drive? Yeah, I mean, as I, as I said earlier, really proud of them. Um, you know, we, Two things we said going into was will we be a team to play with discipline? And then secondly, how would we manage and handle adversity, which we haven't done really well uh, the first couple of years with me here. So I was really proud of the way they faced and handled the adversity of the ebb and flow of a, a hard fought game. I mean, you know, West Virginia, those guys continue to battle as well. So again, I give them a lot of credit. But what I was really most proud of was the playmakers in our offense and defense made the plays they, that were there when they needed to be made. And, you know, that's one area that we haven't necessarily done that uh, during my short time back here as the head coach. Coach, uh, first of all, congratulations on a big win right here. And uh, the defense in the second half held the great West Virginia offense to only three points. And that was almost like a hurry up uh, situation. What were the adjustments at halftime? What went wrong with the first and what did you adjust for the second? Well, I mean, I think as with anything, that first game, you go in and you don't really know how they're going to attack you. Um, and they had a lot of answers for us wanting to play man coverage. They hit the tunnel screen early in the game. Uh, they did some things with the back where they had some matchups where number four, who we knew was a big time player, they got some matchup issues or had some matchup situations where uh, they had an advantage. And I thought Brian did a, a great job there making sure that four didn't beat us. Um, he made some plays early 
uh, made some plays in the first half, but you know we talked about, hey, if it, we're not gonna let their best player beat us, so let's figure out that. And we made some adjustments with playing, mixing zone coverage in with some of the man stuff. Uh, we, we started doing more five-man pressures to try to get the quarterback uncomfortable. So uh, again, our defense did a really good job after you know settling down once we had a pretty good understanding or beat on what they wanted to do, attack us, and at halftime made some, some good adjustments. I'm sorry, it's your Coach, I know it's easier when you're the home team, but was there any adjustment period in terms of getting used to having fans back in there in terms of communication or, or really anything else? Well, luckily for us, man, we try to dot the I's and cross the T's. And, you know, our Thursdays, we practice indoors and we put crowd noise in. And we, we played with crowd. We had crowd noise in on Thursday. And it, it drives us crazy as a coach to have to deal with it because you can't necessarily coach your guys. But anticipating that we would have a good crowd, our fans really showed up in our student section. I can't tell them just how much our players appreciate having them there for four quarters and them being uh, playing a major role in the fourth quarter when we needed it to be loud and we needed the energy, we fed off of them. So hopefully we can create a, a trend of continuing to have our fans show up. West Virginia, they, they always travel well. And, and so it was a great atmosphere back at the Shell. And, uh, being able to go out and, and get a win here at home. Hey, Coach. Um, just what is your assessment of Talia's performance? This, you know, first sort of big game atmosphere like this, and you know, obviously had a few big plays there with Dante and Rakim. So, you know, what, how do you assess him? Yeah, I thought Talia played well. I mean, you know, obviously with when we win, it's easier to coach those guys, and you know, there's some things that jump out. You know, taking a sack there uh, right at right before the half where. We had to kick a 51-yard field goal, and if he just throws the ball away, uh, you know, we may end up getting some points. So um, I thought he was a little antsy early. He was kind of looking at the rush, but really, really settled down. And, and one of the things I think helps him is knowing that we've got those playmakers out on the perimeter, you know, tight ends and receivers and our running backs that all he has to do is do what he's coached to do. And, you know, we saw him execute the offense uh, to a T there. And, you know, late in the third quarter, the big pass to rock him to kind of break the game open. You know, we had a couple of opportunities to take the momentum, and our special teams let us down with the big returns, which then flipped the momentum. So, uh, great game for us for a first game to really see who we are and create an identity as a team that's going to fight for four quarters and, you know, not let adversity get us down. So, proud of Leah and the way he fought, he fought as well. Hey, Mike, you, you probably don't want to make too big of a deal of this win, but from like a program building perspective with being kind of a swing game right out of the gate against a really good border rival, do you feel like it, it's a step forward in terms of that program maturity that you keep talking about? Yeah, I thought I thought so. I mean, I thought going into this game, I mean, our kids really, as I said before, we had a competitive camp. I was really happy with the way they fought through, you know, this, this summer uh, during training camp. We faced some, some hot days, and these guys fought through it. Um, we got through healthy, um, you know, our strength and conditioning staff did a really good job this summer uh, with our conditioning levels, which I was really happy to see because it seemed like we got stronger as the game went on. So, uh, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that, uh, you know, excited for what we've done in one game, but still a lot, a lot of corrections that got to be made, and I'm looking forward to making them. Uh, Lauren, to your left. Hi. Hey, Lauren. Hi. <laughs> Uh, sorry. For uh, Tarheeb Still and Nick Cross were two guys who had like a lot of expectations coming into this season, and they definitely delivered today. For you as a coach, how is it to have kind of that consistency from last season and that veteran leadership there on the defensive end? Yeah, I mean, you know, both those guys are as advertised. You know, we keep seeing Nick get better and better with each game. And, you know, as I said, Tarheeb got off the yellow bus last year and started 12 games or five games a season for us. And then he shows back up this week and he plays, you know, nickel, he plays corner. If you watch the way that kid plays, he's he's having a blast out there, man. And that's, I really like that. I think to me, that's an identity that I want our players to have is that when they go out there and they're playing, that they're enjoying it, having fun, uh, playing a great game of football. And both those guys are great examples of recruiting and developing your players. And I'm really happy with their uh, performance today. Thank you. Back on the hey, good. Congratulations on your win. A couple questions about a couple individual players. The performance of Raheem Jarrett and Taylor Fleet Davis in particular. Yeah. And then um, 
we're recruiting another one here. Four takeaways by your defense after you caught that one last night. Yeah, well, let me say this now because I know it's a big deal for Rock Kim. I mean, he prefer, he is Rock Kim, and uh, every time I tease him and call him Rakim, and he gets mad at me, but he's Rock Kim for now on. Uh, but Tayon and Rock, you know, Tayon has benefited from COVID. You know, it's a super senior for us. I mean, a guy that you know we brought back for an extra year, and much like I think what we saw out of Jake Funk last year, I'm hoping that he does and takes that next level. And I've seen it with the maturity. I've seen it with his leadership. Um, he's one of those guys that our players feed off of his emotion. And it was great to see him get that big run there at the end. You know, I'm glad he ran out of gas because he needed to go down a little earlier instead of, you know, trying to score a touchdown. But, you know, I'm really happy with the way uh, Fleet's performed. Uh, and then you said, who else? Uh, Rock Kim. Yeah. yeah, with Rock Kim, I mean, the guy is, again, like I said, as advertised, uh, highly and heavily recruited. Um, a guy that we count on as one of our better playmakers. Uh, a guy that we've got to continue to find ways to diversify, to get him the ball. Um, you know, he'll continue to get better for us with each game. You know, we only played five last year, and the thing that kind of shows up is he's a, he's much better. He got better as the season went on last year, and he started out fast today, and I think he'll, you'll see him continue to improve as we improve. And then your defense four takeaways. Yeah, I mean, one of the things going into last season, at the end of it, you know, we always study things, and we were a defense that did not have many take takeaways last year. If you look at our turnover ratio, and, uh, it was great to be able to get four turnovers today. Um, I think we got one on special teams. Um, so, uh, you know, anytime you can take the ball over, um, the, you know, the, the two trends that we've seen in college football, or if not just football in itself, is big plays and turnovers. Those are the two keys. And we had some explosive plays on offense, uh, and then we got some turnovers, and that really helps us. Coach, just a quick question about the building off town Fleet Davis, well, the overall depth in the running back room, and what was your assessment of it? Yeah, I was happy, like I said, that you know after the first half, I felt like we needed to check their oil in the run game. And, really establish or try to establish an identity that we, you know, they were trying to defend the pass and they had some open spaces and I felt we needed to run the ball and we made that an emphasis and I think in the third quarter, uh, we were out of sorts there the first couple of drives trying to run the ball. Uh, we're one of those offenses that probably plays better when we're throwing it out on the perimeter and then running off of those and, but you know, what, what I saw was they, that we kept pounding at it and that's kind of what a good run game does. You may have a one, two, three yard gain, and then all of a sudden that thing pops. And I think that's what we saw. And, you know, the depth that we've been able to create with uh, Fleet, uh, the two young guys, Isaiah, you know, Jacobs, you know, Penny Boone didn't play a lot today. He was, you know, missed some, uh, quite a bit of time there at the end of camp. And we expect him to be available and ready to go. He was available today, but really happy with the depth that we've been able to create at running back. Hey, Coach. Um, I know Brandon Jennings was a guy that you had mentioned in the past just because he hit an early enroll lead, but uh, he was a guy that I got a chance to play a lot today, and I think in that late third quarter, he forced that fumble. Um, so for him to kind of take that stride in this first game, what does that kind of mean for you and that, that linebacker room? Yeah, you know, uh, with the injury there to Fanage early in the game, uh, linebacker for us is one of the thin areas that, that we, we are, and, you know, the young guy was thrown into the, the fire, per se, and you know, he's really done a great job. Uh, you know, we were fortunate that he was a guy that was a mid-year grad, so he got a spring under his belt. He's a guy that plays really heavy-handed, um, really physical at the point of attack. So what you saw today, uh, I think you'll just continue to see him get better and better. Okay, two more on to your right. Go. Hey, Coach. Um, congrats on the win. Thank you. Um, two guys that didn't play or coach today but were there, um, Tua and uh, Stefan. What does it mean to you, the team, the game, the program, to have two guys like that on the sideline? Yeah, you know, we're a football family. And, you know, Steph, uh, he called me about a week ago and, and told me, say, hey, I, I'm going to be in town. He actually spoke to the team last night at the hotel and then showed up for the game. And, you know, Tua, you know, the relationship there we have, obviously his brother's here on the team. And uh, we knew that he would be here. But we also had a ton of other guys, you know, Torrey Smith and Sean Merriman, Ricardo Dickerson. Ricardo Young, I mean, to me, that's what this program has got to be all about is, uh, you know, now that we've stabilized it, we got to get some of those old Terps back, man, in the fold, supporting the program. And, you know, it's great to see that. It really shows that the 
the relationships are not just four years, but 40 years, and they really uh, support the Terps. Hey, Coach. Uh, I know you talked a little bit about Rakim's overall performance, but specifically after struggling with that kickoff ball early on to come back at that 60-yard touchdown, can you talk a little bit about his his mental ability, the player that you know him to be, you said he's at, as advertised, just the ability to come back from that? Yeah, you know, good players aren't afraid to make mistakes, and Rock is one of those guys. You know, the kickoff, we, were, we had a little bit more of a win than we anticipated. We should have moved him up five yards, so he worked to try to get there. Those things happen. Those are the things that first game, us as a staff making those type of corrections and adjusting. Um, but you can't be afraid to make mistakes. You can't be afraid to fail. He's a talented player. Um, I'm sure he'll make a few more mistakes, but I think you also saw he has the ability to make a lot of plays for us. And, you know, we'll live with those growing pains and, and, and we'll, we'll continue to see him get better with each and every game. I mean, he's six games into a career, so really excited for his future. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.